What's up guys, in today's video we're gonna be talking about seven common investing mistakes that you must, must avoid in order to become a profitable investor. Every single one of these mistakes are extremely, extremely common, especially if you're new to investing and if you fall victim to them, they will destroy any kind of long-term profitability in which you may be looking. So let's talk about them as well as talk about some solutions as well as some strategies in which you can look to put in place in order to avoid these mistakes at all costs. But before we do so guys, my name is Mitch. I post all kinds of videos on investing and the stock market. If you do enjoy content like that, hit that big red subscribe button down below as well. Drop a like on the video guys. Really, really helps out the channel. And with that being said, Let's dive straight into it. So the first investing mistake that you're going to want to avoid is panic selling. Now I wanna break this down into two core segments. So firstly, let's think about the word panic in the context of investing. If you're panicking when the value of your investment in which you've made starts to fall, then the chances are you're too emotionally attached to the money in which you've invested in that given equity. It's important to always ensure that you have a strategy that's right for you and your own investing objectives and your own risk appetite. The reason why I say this is that if you have a strategy, it starts to remove some of that emotional feeling about when you're looking to invest into the stock market. And therefore, because of this, the element of panic or any kind of emotional feel towards the stock market starts to disappear. Then obviously we have the selling part of the panic selling. If you're selling your investment, the question in which you're gonna to wanna to ask yourself is, is the only reason why I'm selling this investment because it's fallen below the value of my cost basis. And if so, you have to ask yourself whether that investment was the right investment for you. And to add to that, it's also worthwhile acknowledging that there have been 33 bear markets since the 1900s, an average of a bear market every 3.6 years. Now, if you consider a bear market is a drop in the value of the stock market equal to or greater that of 20%, like in which we saw that in March of 2020, it's actually perfectly normal for the market to correct ever so often often and the market to even to dip into bear market territory and therefore the value of your investments to potentially fall every three to four years. Now, from my point of view, I believe that during bear market conditions or even corrective market territory, these are the best times to actually make additions to your investment portfolio rather than that of panic selling. So investing mistake number two is the fear of missing out, also known as FOMO. And look guys, let me be completely honest. I think we all get an element of FOMO when we're investing in the stock market, the crypto market, or any financial market out there. We're probably all sat here thinking that we wish we would have bought into Dogecoin back in January and now we'd be all sat pretty on several thousand percent return on investment and because of that it's sometimes very very easy to jump on the train once the train has already left the station. Now what I mean by that is you never want to be late to an investment in order to try and catch a quick win especially when the best of the gains are perhaps already behind us. If we take Dogecoin as an example if you'd invested £100 at four cents back in January or February time this year even after the huge sell-off in which we've seen over the course of the past couple of days, that £100 would still be worth over £1,000 today. With just over a 1,000% return on investment, with Dogecoin now trading at 53 cents. However, let's say that you decided to invest that same £100 into Dogecoin at today's prices. Well, the price of Dogecoin would need to be $6.35 to give you that same 1,000% return on investment, which would mean Dogecoin's market capitalization would be roughly 815 billion US dollars. So hopefully that provides a little bit of context as to why sometimes it's perhaps worthwhile looking for the next investment rather than trying to look at the investment in which everybody's already got in on and everybody's already gained the best of the returns in which were available. So in a nutshell, try not to fall victim to a bit of fear of missing out. Always try and work out your risk versus your reward because as I said, you never wanna jump into an investment when the best returns have already disappeared. Coming in at investing mistake number three, we have only looking at price action. Now looking at price action as well as historical price performance of any given asset class in which we're looking to invest into, is an extremely important element of your overall due diligence. It shouldn't be the kind of sole thing in which you look at in order to make an investment decision. Now the Dogecoin example is a fantastic one to look at because I can pretty much guarantee that there will be a number of people who have just simply invested into Dogecoin based on its historical price performance and probably people just looking on Reddit and seeing that it's going to the moon at some point in the future, it's going to $1 and people will literally just invest on the basis of the historical price performance and the price forecast for the future without having done any kind of additional background research or background due diligence on Dogecoin 
or even the cryptocurrency market on the whole. And this is where I really want to emphasize the point that it's so, so important not just to simply look at price, but to also do deep and proper due diligence on any asset in which you're investing into. If it's stocks that you're looking to invest into, be sure to go onto the company's investor relations website, go and read through the company's strategy, go and read through the company's financial reports, scroll through their financial statements, understand the position in which the business is in currently and understand where it's looking to go in the future as well. If it's crypto, on the other hand, it's very, very easy just to simply look at price action, but be sure to also go onto the company's websites, do a lot of extra reading, a lot of extra due diligence, see how scalable that coin is, see the real life business use cases in which it potentially has, and see whether that's something that actually resonates with you before you make an investment in it. So in a nutshell, it's so, so important to do your due diligence in order to make informed investment decisions and not just solely look at price performance and historical price action of a given asset class. Investing mistake number four is ignoring your tolerance for risk. Every single one of us has our own appetite for risk. Mine might be completely different to yours and yours might be completely different to mine. And because of that, it's important that we all understand our own appetite for risk. For me personally, based on my stage of life and my specific circumstances, I would probably say that I do have a slightly lower appetite for risk. And you can probably see that through the asset allocation in which I have in my investment portfolio. Now, for those of you guys who don't know what that looks like, I have roughly 50% allocated to exchange traded funds or diversified funds, if you like, like the S&P 500. I then have about 40% allocated to a bunch of stocks, lots of them being tech stocks. And then I have about a 10% allocation towards cryptocurrency. Whereas if you were perhaps on the higher end of the risk spectrum, you would perhaps have 100% allocated to cryptocurrency and be completely not interested in ETFs or even stocks whatsoever. And that's absolutely fine. Just make sure that those investments fall in line with your own risk tolerance. I think it's probably worthwhile saying here that don't make investments that make you feel uncomfortable because to put it bluntly if your investments in which you've made are keeping you up at night the chances are you're making the wrong investments investing mistake number five is something called the shiny ball syndrome we live in a world where it's very very easy to become influenced and distracted and because of that it's very very easy to jump from one investment to the next continuously looking to chase the next hot stock or the next hot cryptocurrency. If you're continuously jumping from one investment to the next, if you're continuously buying and selling stocks, buying and selling cryptocurrency, this high level of investment turnover is likely to become costly over the course of the long term. For me personally, you could probably say I'm possibly a little bit too rigid with my investments. I'm very, very specific about the stocks and the ETFs and the cryptocurrencies in which I'm investing into. And each one of those investments certainly have their purpose. And in actual fact, apart from my crypto investment portfolio, which I'm actively trying to diversify as of over the course of the past couple of weeks or so, other than that, when I think about my stocks and ETFs, I literally haven't added a single additional equity or ETF into those specific portion of my investment portfolio for, well, I can't even remember how long it's been, several, several months. Now that you could probably see that as a good or a bad thing, but I think it's probably wise to err on the side of caution and not to look to actively have a high level of investment turnover within your investment portfolio. Investing mistake number six is not having an exit strategy in mind. As the old saying goes, you'll never go broke booking a profit, and this is so true when it comes to investing. Each investment in which you have should certainly have some kind of set parameters or at least a little bit of a plan behind it as to not only why you've actually bought into that position, but also how you're gonna get out of and sell that position too. Whether that's a forced exit due to a change in the underlying fundamentals of that business, or even perhaps that price target in which you set out when you first made that investment has now been hit, you can now look to take your profits and look to exit that position and move on to the next investment. It's so important to have an exit strategy in mind in order to maximize the profits from the positions in which you've taken. Investing mistake number seven is not thinking about taxes. This is probably the most important element of investing and that is to make sure that you are paying the correct amount of tax that is owed to HMRC because the last thing that you want is HMRC knocking on your door saying that you owe us X amount of money in tax because you've now become the latest Dogecoin millionaire. Now, all jokes aside, it's really, really important to understand the tax situation in which you are individually in. And that goes for dividend income and capital gains in which you've made from realized gains on your positions. Now, fortunately for us over here in the UK, we have something called an ISA or a stocks and shares ISA, whereby we don't have to pay any tax 
from the funds that we hold within those ISA accounts. However, if you're using a general investing account, you will be subject to tax if you are earning over and above that of the tax-free allowances in which HMRC have set out. And for added detail, that's £2,000 for dividends and £12,300 for capital gains. If you're making more than this, you're going to want to submit something called a self-assessment tax return via HMRC. But as always, if you are unsure, be sure to contact a tax advisor or even HMRC direct. So they are the seven common investing mistakes. Be sure to let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below and let me know what your worst investing mistake you've ever made is. And if you found value in the video, guys, be sure to drop a like on it, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And with that being said, I'll see you over in the next video.